Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habata fillah from the dua that we should all memorize and supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal with is the dua or the dhikr in the khuruj min al manzil which means it is the dhikr or the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when leaving one's house because this is a very simple uh, dhikr, a simple uh, supplication, if you will, or way of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and earth, Rabbil Alameen. This is a very simple, simplistic way of remembering Him, Tabarak wa ta'ala, and fortifying the Muslim. And this is why this uh, dua was one of the dua that uh, were collected in the book of supplication, Husn al-Muslim, the fortification of the Muslim, because this is fortifying you in your religion. This is a fortification of your deen, and is by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And I'm advising myself first, then I'm advising you, my brothers and sisters, to memorize this dua and implement it in your life when you're going to leave, because all of us leave our houses. Even the wife who's cooped up in her home, she's going to leave her home at some point to go out with her husband or to go shopping, whatever. That everyone needs this dua. And the dua is as follows. Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla, wa la quwwata, illa billah. Again, Bismillah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah which means in the name of Allah I put my trust in Allah Tawakkaltu ala Allah. Wala hawla, wala quwata illa billah. And there is no might, nor power, except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahabatu billah, this dua has immense meaning for us. And it shows also the jawami' al-kalim, which means the concise and precise uh, statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his adhkar and his dua, how sometimes they were so simplistic and short and concise with major import, major meaning, that uh, an immense fawaid, immense benefits, many benefits. When we look at this, uh, it comes from a hadith, the hadith of Anas bin Malik, radiyallahu ta'ala and in this hadith, it begins with the Bismillah. Bismillah. In the name of Allah. And when we do anything, of course that's halal, we, be, we should begin with the Bismillah. And this is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sunnah of Islam that to seek barakah and blessings in the things that we do. So even when you are leaving your home and beginning your journey, beginning your activity, going shopping, whatever it is, you're beginning to do some activity, you're seeking barakah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This puts blessing in the activity that you're doing, the idnillah ta'ala. And so it begins, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, seeking that barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To waqal to Allah, I seek the help and assistance of Allah. And as we mentioned, a tawakkal, the true tawakkal al Allah, is. It means putting your trust in your affairs with Allah, but making it an effort at the same time to attain what you want to attain. So, 
if you, for example, wish to uh, gain wealth, how do we talk a lot of law on that? Do we just sit in our homes and then we just make dua that we're going to become rich, we're going to become wealthy, and to in, in order to spend the money in good? Or do we go out seeking the bounties of Allah in the marketplace, putting out job applications, doing business online, selling gold and silver, whatever, doing trade, all the various ways to make money? Do we make an effort to seek our risk and seek the bounties of Allah and then put our trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as the results? That is tawakkal al Allah. That is the real tawakkal Allah. Allah So in this dua to Allah, it means uh, It means that you have put your 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 trust and you're dependent, you're totally dependent. I'm depending upon him. I'm making myself dependent upon my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because I am dependent upon him anyway, whether I acknowledge it or not. Him and him alone, that's Tawheed Allah. That's Tawheed. Ma tafweed al amr ilay. And I'm leaving my affairs with him. All of this in that short statement. Bismillah to waqal to Allah. I'm relying on Allah. And then in the next ibara, wala hawla, wala quwata, illa billah. And there is no might nor power save that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that all affairs return to Him. He is the creator and sustainer of everything. And He is the, the, the He has the power and the control over everything, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And so those scholars they mention wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah means that there is no there is no might and there's no way things can can can, can uh, harm harm me when you're saying this statement <clears throat> you're saying that nothing can harm you or benefit you Except, and and there's no strength from me, except that it is with and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, as they say, is a kalima. Islam wa istislam. It's a it's a statement of of uh, of Islam. You know. And it is a, a statement of istislam, that you're surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're surrendering your affairs. This is what you're doing just in this simple dua. You're putting your trust in Allah. You're seeking the barakah of Allah, first. You're putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, second. And you are acknowledging that all, that he has the might and the full power, and he's the only one who could benefit you or allow for harm to come to you. It can't come to you unless it is in the divine qadr, the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. What do we learn from this hadith, Habita Filah, or from this dua? Some of the benefits that we, we learn from the hadith and from this dua is first, it clarifies that the names of Allah or the or from Amongst the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Waqil. Meaning the, the one who protects and the one who is the, the one who controls the affair and, and controls it for all of creation. Another benefit we gain from this hadith and this, this dua is that tawakkal ala Allah, as we mentioned, that it is not negated by making effort to attain something. By making effort 
to attain something. Meaning, as we mention as a more comprehensive definition of tawakkul al Allah, meaning ittimad al Allah wa fi'l asbab, that lets us know by making effort that's not going to negate the fact that you're putting your trust in Allah. There are some situations where you may not be able to really make effort. You may be imprisoned, you may be oppressed, you may not have the ability. So then it just becomes a matter of your heart putting your trust in your faith, in your iman and Allah that he's going to better your situation. But when you have the opportunity to make a difference, then you should strive to achieve those righteous ends and put your trust in Allah Azzawajal. May Allah bless us in all of our affairs. I mean, Yerubil Alameen. Another benefit of this uh, supplication is this supplication also shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one, the protector and supporter. He is al-wakil. <clears throat> so that you should put your trust in Him, tabarak wa ta'ala, for the results of all of your various uh, things that you strive for in this life. A last benefit I want to mention is that this dua also shows us that the shaitan really has no strength over you. Yes, he can whisper. Yes, he can attempt to mislead. But really, and he can plan and deceive. Well, I can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al kareem verily the plan of the shaitan the plans the the they're the wicked planning the deception the way to, to, to get you off the road and track and off the sabil al mu'minin kana da'ifa it's it's weak it's a weak path the shaitan is weak but let's not make him strong so the stronger our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and the more we put our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, the more strength we have over the shaitan in our affairs. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَّوَقَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitab al-Kareem, and put your trust in Allah if you are from the mu'mineen. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be from Ahli Iman. And may Allah rectify our conditions and our affairs and save us and protect our children from the shaitan and protect our children from illness, protect our children from, <coughs> from the deception of the shayateen and protect our children from every kind of evil and all the Muslims everywhere. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.